All right, let's get into it. Hi everyone, it's Isabella here and welcome back to another episode of I've Got You. We're on this podcast, I've Got You on all things. And today we are talking about something that is incredibly important. We are talking about seasonal depression. So we're in the month of October right now and especially because the seasons are changing, the time is gonna change, all of that kind of shit. You know what I'm talking about. We're bulking up for the oh so infamous shit to the fan, the seasonal depression. Now if you're someone like me who struggles with it really good, it's not good, it's fucking awful. I was like, I need to talk about this in a video about what I do to help myself. This is a really big, important video for me because this is something that kicks my ass every year without fail. And it's really hard to pull yourself out of it. And I know a lot of people feel alone in these instances. I know a lot of people are kind of stuck. They don't know what to do. It's incredibly difficult. And so, cause we're slowly building up to people getting hit by it. I honestly thought it would be a good idea to make a video talking about, hey, these are things that I do to get through or overcome um, seasonal depression, what I get to do, how do I help myself, and so much more. So for you up in today's um, episode, you guys know the drill. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. Uh, definitely hit that five star button. I would greatly appreciate that for a five star rating, or even if you're watching on YouTube, you know, scoot on down the link in the description below and go give a five star review. I would love that. And yeah, without further ado, let's hop into this shit. I'm someone that's always struggled with depression. I didn't really know what it was for a very, very long time. There is less set out. It could be more gloomy. It could be cold and it just kind of is like a horrible shit storm that makes you fucking miserable. You know, whenever it's summertime, people just kind of light up more sometimes because it's like, oh, there's sun out, you know, there's more going on. It's just fun. Whereas, you know, for like, for example, I live in Kansas. It gets cold. It's miserable. I f- it feels shitty. And if you're someone that lives alone, for example, it can be incredibly isolating and lonely. So let's just real quickly cover a couple of these things about what this is. This little acronym is SAD, which is SAD. Um, <laughs> seasonal affective disorder. I'm just reading off my notes over here, but this is a type of depression that occurs during specific seasons, usually fall and winter, and improve in the spring and summer. So symptoms include feeling sad, hopeless, worthless, irritable, or guilty. Energy, you can feel very tired, slow down, or have um, low energy. You can have trouble sleeping or oversleeping. Appetite, have an increased appetite, especially for carbohydrates and sweets. Concentration, you can have difficulty concentrating, remembering, or making decisions. You can have thoughts of unaliving yourself or suicide. Physical physical symptoms. You might have physical aches or pains, headaches, cramps, or digestive problems. And I wanted to rattle this off because I'm just like wanting to kind of bring awareness to it. And again, I am kind of kicking off this episode with make sure to talk to a professional because I am not one. I am a random goofy bitch on the internet that just talks about her experiences. So if you are someone who think, oh fuck, like I can relate to this, definitely reach out to professionals. There are hotlines. I will actually have some hotlines in the description below and some resources down there so that you guys can check that out. Uh, because they're definitely helpful. But that is something that's just a very difficult thing to experience for me. I struggle with a lot of things. I know I like, I will kind of get to where it's like, I kind of turn to zombie mode almost, which is really, really hard to pull myself out of. And when I live alone and when I sometimes kind of lose motivation to do anything or like plan things for myself to do, it kicks my ass. I know last year was pretty damn rough, I'd say. And I kind of thought, you know what, maybe I need to start like actually getting prepared for it and doing things to help myself out. And that's pretty much what led me to make this video today. So let's talk about what I do and things that I have done of help. Big thing is, again, talking to a professional. Some people need medication. Um, I have been on medication before. I'm going to be so real with you. My birth control, oddly enough, has helped out a ton <laughs> with me feeling better, as silly as that is, because it's helped with some of my hormone regulations. But some people need actual like other antidepressants and whatnot. That is incredibly useful, by the way. I really want to use this time to just not demonize depressed, like antidepressants and whatnot. I think it really sucks that so many people are like, you're on meds, no, or like, I don't want to be on meds. Like if if you need to be on meds, you need to be on meds, babe. And that's literally okay, all right? Sometimes it's short-term, sometimes it's long-term. It kind of just depends on what you need. So that's a big thing that can help people. I've personally been on specific antidepressants before that have helped me out a ton. And you know, there's some things that didn't work, some things that did, but that is something that has kind of a 
assisted me in getting through this process. Another thing I've actually seen a lot of people do, and I've tried this, but I'm kind of doing a different version of it, is light therapy. So apparently there are specific lights that you can have that are supposed to kind of give you some more sunlight. So pretty much you sit in front of this light for like 30 minutes to an hour, and it's supposed to kind of give you more of that light and help add with that serotonin boost, I believe is what it's, what it's called. And I honestly think it's a good idea. I think having that on, especially if I'm working in an office or whatnot, is really, really helpful. And I know that might sound so silly to some people, but you got to do what you got to do, right? But I see a lot of people utilizing the light therapy that have really helped out a ton. So that's also something that I'm kind of throwing out on this list for people to consider. Next is changing my sleep schedule. So I actually am going to be doing this once the time change kicks in. I know I'm kind of filming this early compared to October, but I know that when time is changing, our days are shorter and everything. I also realized that my sleep schedule was so shit to where I would wake up pretty damn late uh, because I work from home and then I would just hardly have any hours of sunlight. So what I'm personally going to be doing and what I think is great for a lot of people is if you can wake up earlier. And I know this isn't going to fix everything, but I'm trying to have it to where I get as much light as possible. If I'm sleeping through most of it, that's not really as beneficial. So if I adjust my sleep schedule and wake up way earlier and I am around more light, I do think that that's going to be more beneficial. And I feel like I've had more of a long protective day with sunlight versus not. It's just something that I'm going to be starting to do that I do recommend other people start up as well just because if you get more light, it just feels better. Like for me, this is why I like having, like I'm in front of natural light. I love big windows. I love have, being in front of more light and having access to that and just being up when the damn sun is up is good. I'd rather go to bed earlier than and wake up earlier to hit my sun if, if that's what I got to do. But yeah. <laughs> Next one is workout and movement. This is something I wasn't as active in last year, but I am more active right now. Working out and getting movement is important. I know when you're cold and when it's miserable, you're like, fuck, I don't want to do this. Or you're like, I don't want to roll out of bed and go to the gym. I know, but I'm telling you right now, when you feel like shit, you really need any boost of something, like literally any boost of positivity and like something that can actually make you feel better. This is like, you, you, you got to do something. So you got to pick out what kind of movement works for you. I know I've tried at home Pilates. There's a YouTube channel. I think, oh shit, I'm trying to remember what kind of video it was that I filmed, but there was a video where I was talking about, I think it was like light life-changing tips or something where movement is really important and it, it is okay I know so many people are like oh my god I don't want to run or I don't want to do that but like I get the hype now around the gym I used to be one of those people that was like no I don't want to do this no it just it sucks I don't want it no, no no it helps it makes you feel better so getting into a routine of movement is going to be good whether it's going to the gym whether it's going to a yoga class whether it's going to Pilates whether it's just doing classes at home you don't need a bunch of equipment to make it happen you just have to be consistent in doing it maybe that's like after winding down from your day working out, that could be a good thing. I used to work out in the evenings. Maybe it's where first thing in the morning, maybe that's your motivation to wake up earlier is you got to get a workout in before work. Either way, you got to find something, especially when you feel like shit, you got to cling on for dear life to anything that's going to make you feel better. And those are just things that I've tried that have helped me out immensely and I recommend for everyone. So the next thing is focusing on not isolating yourself during these moments. So actual fun fact, I struggle with this big time. This is probably one of my biggest issues that I isolate really bad. When something's wrong, when I'm not doing good, when I'm feeling mentally off, I am radio silent. My friends don't really hear me. My mom will hear from me decently, but I just, I'm not active. I'm not really there. It sucks. And I noticed that's probably my worst thing I could do because I get stuck in the house, then I get even worse. And then I just keep like feeding into the vicious cycle of I feel like shit, I don't know what to do. And I have realized that I need to start doing things and forcing myself to go out because I will be fucked and I will be miserable all the time. So what I think is a good thing I've been starting to do and I recommend everyone else doing is making sure that every single month when you plan out your calendar, if you do, hop on that. I recommend planning things every single weekend. Now they don't have to be crazy. They don't have to have a lot of money spent. You don't need to do all that. You need to consciously though, choose things that you're going to do on the weekends. Make plans for yourself. I have times where it's one weekend. I am learning. I'm painting and like learning from a YouTube video. There's other times where I'm going to go out and I'm going to go out and drink at a bar and watch a football game, which by the way, watching a football game at fucking Buffalo Wild Wings is so fun. Okay. But like things like that, sitting down and consciously thinking of all the things you can do and plan out the entire month. If you plan it out, it's so much easier now if you, especially if you feel like shit during the month, because then you're like, oh, cool. Okay. Now I know what I'm going to do. You don't have to think. You don't need to use brain power. You just are like, okay, I know what I'm going to do. Now I have to just get myself out to do 
do it. Making yourself be around friends and family. Making yourself do things that are fun just by yourself is going to help you out because it's a little bit of a change of scenery and you're making yourself focus on something else instead of the shitty feelings that you're feeling. And I know it doesn't fix depression. I know it doesn't make it go away. But as someone who's been severely depressed, finding other things to do helps you at least pass the time and kind of like do positive things for your brain and make you feel just a little bit better in that moment. And that's definitely something that we need, especially during the shitty times. So whatever you do, try and avoid isolating. I get it. It sucks. Uh, Next thing. So uh, again, I'm going to preach this as loud as I can. Talk to your doctor. I am a random person. Do not forget that. But we are talking about a vitamin, vitamin D. There are some people when they struggle with seasonal depression, they are deficient in vitamin D because there's less sun. You might be interested in taking vitamin D. I actually completely forgot about this. I'm going to be definitely grabbing some because like I, y'all, I'm a homebody. I am in my office constantly. I live by myself, all that. So I'm not around as much light. I'm not at all that kind of stuff. You know what I mean? So I'm definitely going to pick up some <laughs> in Walmart when I go. But uh, I've heard some people who have deficiencies or are not around the sun a lot need some more vitamin D. And so that's just something else that I wanted to pass on there as just a potential that might help you. Some people can check their vitamin D levels at their doctors. Just That's just something to consider that I have looked up and have been recommended to do. Not saying that's going to work for everyone, but that is definitely something I have been told that could be beneficial for me. And just, you know, pre- pass down the knowledge. Next thing that I recommend everyone doing is especially when we start hitting these moments where we start feeling like shit, we need to really focus on the kind of content that we consume. So one thing I noticed is whenever I get really depressed and then I fall down rabbit holes on social media of really negative things, I start feeling way worse. Um, I will start falling down a lot of negative shit. I'm going to be so honest with you. Some of the negative things I see, like they're real world things happening. But I'm going to be honest, as a depressed person, I don't even fucking hear about that right now. And some people are like, what, 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 Paula? I, I know it's the real world, but right now I'm trying to keep okay. <laughs> I'm trying to keep sane. I'm trying to not think about so many negative things. So I want you to be very aware of the content you consume when you feel like shit, because I do think it impacts how you just feel in general. So I actually, I used to make a joke about this. Um, whenever I was really anxious and depressed, I would always, I don't know what it was, but I would always watch Disney movies or Barbie movies. And I would play them in the background as I was getting work, like constantly on repeat all day. And every movie that would get done, I'd be like, oh my God, yay. Like I've gotten like this much time has passed and I've gotten work done. Like it was like a positive or I would constantly make sure I would be adamant about like, if I'm on this phone, I'm not zoning into negative shit. Like I need to be super cautious about what I consume. I need you to do that. If you got to block off the fucking news for a bit, I get it. If you got to block off a bunch of negative stuff or words on your social media, do it. If you're going to just have replay your favorite shows and things that make you happy, do it. I know this sounds really silly, but I really have noticed that whenever I was just wrapped up in a bunch of negative bullshit and obsessing over it and like doing what I normally could in a you know better state of mind, it didn't make me feel better. I need to be surrounded by positives. I can't be dealing with that. So as silly as this is, we are making our own, what is it, like echo chamber of positivity. We got to, I personally, I'm all for the echo chamber of positivity temporarily when we feel like shit. So if you are watching a Disney movie, whatever social media you're consuming, get away from the negative shit, zone into the positive and that's it. And by the way, whenever you're engaging with stuff on social media, just remember you are also training your social media algorithms to feed in more of something. So if you keep engaging with negative shit, you're going to keep getting negative shit. And it's it, it's very quick. I'm not kidding. I can sit on social media for an hour, scroll through memes, and then all of my recommended is memes. I could scroll through a bunch of girly stuff and then immediately, what, 20 minutes, it's all girly stuff. So I would work on that. And right now, even if you want, retrain your algorithms, start looking at positive things and things that make you happy and only engage with that, especially when you know you're starting to feel like shit. Next one that I love is make a dopamine list. So I saw this uh, trend on TikTok actually where it's pretty much a list of fun things you can do and it's again kind of removing that brain power where you look at your list you're like oh here's a fun thing I can do so when you're bored instead of yeah doom scrolling you are able to kind of build a list of things that you can go out and do that can make you feel better whether it's in the house or outside of the house now actually fun fact stay tuned because the next episode is actually going to be 20 things that you can do that is not doom scrolling so I build you a list we talk about all these things I help you out so Stay tuned because I am making that 
and I have heavily benefited from it. And I recommend you guys to watch that whenever it comes out. But building a list yourself is going to be incredibly important because you are able to now have something that is easily accessible to you, whether it's on your phone or a notebook of things that you can do that are fun, that are exciting, that you genuinely enjoy. Because one thing that I hate is sitting down in my bed and being like, I'm bored. And I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do? Like drives me nuts. And then I got to think about it. And then I get distracted. And then when I look up ideas on my phone, then I start doom scrolling again because I forget what I was doing to begin with. Not worth it. Open up your notes app, make a special note, put in your notebook, whatever you got to do, make lists of fun things you can do, whether that's, hey, actually, I'm going to deep clean my closet. I'm going to reorganize some things. Actually, I'm going to plan my next girls night. Um, Actually, I'm going to start painting and watching my favorite show. Little things like that. They don't have to be big. They just have to be something that you can do that's a positive, quick fix. Next thing that I have to mention that I think is really great prep for when you feel like shit. Uh, I talked about this previously, but I definitely think I need to make a video dedicated to this. This is, I make a list actually, and it's right here. It's called getting my life together when I don't know where to begin. I make a list that is there for when I get really, really depressed or I just feel like shit or maybe I'm overwhelmed. My thoughts are all over the place. It's a list dedicated to everything that I need to do in my life to get myself back on track. So for example, I have the category of work on this list. So I put things in my work that I need to do that are my go-tos, like prepping for the next month, getting a calendar ready. And then I have house as another category. So I list off all these things that I can clean throughout the house in every single room. And I just check mark it as I go through the list. And it's all the things, yeah, that I have to clean. So I'm going through this list and I know what needs to be clean and what doesn't. Next, I talk about self. I have things like, hey, have you done an everything shower? Have you tan have you done a little mani pedi have you re-dyed your hair you know have you done your waxing like what are the things done and have you not so it's like self-maintenance then I have a category for mental health I'm like do we need a therapy appointment um do you have your medications refilled do you need to do a mental health check-in like writing down things that you're going through and whatnot uh do you need to meditate for 10 to 15 minutes and then I have other little like responsibilities, organization, etc. That's a list that I have preset on my laptop. So whenever I am just really going through it, I'm like, fuck, I don't know what to do. I feel like shit, I'm overwhelmed. Like, where do I begin? I already made the list. So I recommend you building and pre-building that list because then it's there. It's always in your notes. So you can refer back when things feel too much, when life's kind of falling apart, where you're like, I don't even like, I have so many responsibilities. How, where do I even start? You know where to start now. And it feels good because you see your life requirements pretty much the things you got to do in here and your responsibilities and it's like okay it's all on one page here's my list I'm gonna slowly get through it and then you feel better as you keep checking off the boxes of oh my god I'm being productive I'm getting it done so I truly fully recommend you making a what to do when you don't know what to do list so next up let's talk about basics with hygiene when you feel like shit so big 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 thing as I said, with recommending you having a day of like every weekend at least where you're doing something fun and you schedule that out a month in advance and get yourself ready. I also need you to pick out a day where you do some kind of self-care. I know a lot of people really struggle with hygiene and taking care of themselves, especially when you're severely depressed. And I get that kind of stuff can be really, really hard. But at the end of the day, I also need you to make sure that you at least have one day out of the week where we're checking all the boxes. Like we're zoning in and we're like, okay, I'm going to make sure that I get myself an everything shower. I'm going to make sure I do these things because at least it is set in stone. You have to do it. And it's on a weekend where you may be free. I recommend it because it also just makes me feel better. Like something about making sure like I got my hair good to go. I've scrubbed down. I'm exfoliated. I have just done everything I need to. I feel better. Whereas when I feel a little crusty, you know, and I'm like, fuck, I haven't like, you know, done my nails in a hot second. Or, you know, I haven't like really scrubbed down. I just feel like it makes me feel worse so having a day where I'm dedicating every single week of like all right we're gonna do an everything shower we're gonna make sure we are like exfoliated taken care of we are prepped we feel good we feel clean like it's just a very very good feeling that I recommend everyone have and it's also relaxing and super therapeutic because you can play like a movie or something in the background as you're doing all this it's just it's nice so I really recommend you making conscious effort to put on your calendar of like here's the time where we're going to do this. And if you can't dedicate like a certain time in the 
day. Maybe it's a few things throughout the week that you do. Maybe you like disperse your self-care throughout the week of like, okay, Mondays we are really doing hair wash day and we're doing a mask. Okay, Tuesdays we're going to be doing our nails. Okay, Wednesdays we're going to be doing a lot of exfoliating. Like, okay, Thursdays we're going to be doing like a little at-home facial. Some, something like that. Figure out what works for you, but make sure to focus on self-care to some degree in whatever way that looks like and whatever capacity and energy you're able to give. Last but certainly not least, I love doing this one and I have recently done it. So um, you know how you doom scroll? You know how you get distracted? Well, I realized that I need to turn my responsibilities into a game to make it more fun. So I have recently done this thing where I'm giving myself a reward for accomplishing a task. So I'm turning my responsibilities into games and I think it's so much fucking fun. So I sat down and started writing down in my notes of like, okay, here are things I need to get done. What do I get if I get them complete? So I immediately start making it as like a system of, oh, do you want this this thing okay well you have to do x y and z otherwise you can't get it like you can't do it so every time i associate that task with getting a responsibility done so when i get the responsibility done i feel so much better after i get a little treat like i do something for myself and i feel so much better like for example there was one time where i was like okay bell you got you got to lock the fuck in for a little bit so i was like okay really zone in and go as fast as you can get this done as quickly as you can edit an entire video and that means you have earned yourself a reward of watching watching one episode of the new show that you're addicted to. And it was just nice. It was kind of like a trade-off because then I could go back and forth if I wanted to. It just, it worked out for me. Now, I know some people might not like that idea because they don't want to like associate all of these fun things with requirements. But for me, it works because I like the trade-off of it because I make myself do it then. I actually genuinely want whatever the fuck like I have at the end. So I have to earn it. I have to do something in order to earn it. So I love that a lot. I like the reward system and I truly recommend you doing something like that because I think it could help especially when you feel like shit because it gives you motivation of like oh I get to do this fun thing if I get my responsibility done oh my, and it doesn't have to be like really hard and time consuming it could be incredibly simple but just giving yourself motivation of like okay I'm gonna hop in the shower today I'm going to really scrub myself down good and then after that means I make myself a really good iced coffee just kind of making that barter with yourself of we're gonna do this first and then we get the really fun thing after kind of adds that motivation and it helps you get some things that you need to get done all right, you guys. So that was it for today's episode of talking about things that have helped me out with my seasonal depression. I am preparing for it right now. A lot of these things I need to kind of get and get ready, especially because like I, I know it's going to kick my ass. I know. For everyone out there, I love you. I hope you're doing good. I hope you're okay. If you're finding this when you're feeling like shit, I am so sorry. If anyone has any things that they do to help themselves out, please comment that down below. I would love to hear. You are not alone. Please use utilize resources. If you think you need help, please reach out. You are worthy. You are loved. I care about you. I am so thankful that you are here. That is it. Okay, I'll shut the fuck up. Sorry. Thank you so much for watching. You've got this. We've got this. We're going to make it happen. We're going to power through. And you know, we're going to get to through to the next season because we, we've got this. We are unstoppable. <laughs> and I will see you guys in the next episode. And don't forget that I've got you.